Low move. Ajax remain interested in Aaron Ramsdale. David Raya now is the first choice keeper for Arsenal. Look at what he's done the first two weekends of this season. So Ajax, Southampton are considering whether to go back in with another offer. So far, the reason why a lot of Premier League clubs have struggled to make this work, and for Ajax as well, Arsenal are looking for a permanent deal in this window. They're looking for, for worst case, a loan, ideally with an obligation to buy. But we understand the valuation that Arsenal have set in terms of what that buy price would be has put Premier League clubs off and Ajax so far. But it does look like... And Ramsdale wants first-team football. Whether or not it's in the Premier League or Ajax, they remain interested. All right, let's stay with um, Arsenal outgoings. Eddie and Ketia, is he going out the door? It's going to be an emotional time, I tell you, when we don't talk Eddie and Ketia anymore on our transfer shows. But it's getting ever so close, though, to a move to Crystal Palace. They've agreed a deal in principle with Arsenal Crystal Palace. Fee understood to be around 25 million. Initial payment with 5 million performance-related add-ons. That's still being discussed right now. But he has been given permission to undertake his, his Crystal Palace medical. Forrest were keen, but that didn't materialise. Now, the key is in Ketia, probably a bit like we've said over the last few weeks on Emil Smith Road, probably time for a fresh start, a move. Arsenal, pretty firm. They wanted around £30 million. So this is getting ever so closer. Hopefully, we'll hear from Oliver Glasner tonight's Crystal Palace take on Norwich in the League Cup because plenty of transfer lines for managers to get into in post-match interviews aren't, tonight. Aren't there just? Um, I want to stay with this, Nketiah, though, because at the weekend, we all saw Arteta say, I need a forward, but he's selling one. So aren't they going to be short? Well, a bit of context with Eddie Nketiah. As promising a player as he is and as important as he has been for Arsenal over the years, he's not started a Premier League game in 2024. So by that token, they don't necessarily need to bring a replacement for somebody simply to not get many minutes. But then at the same time, Gabriel Jesus is injured at the moment. The initial prognosis is that he's not going to be out for long. I think what helps Arsenal here is there is an international break following this game against Brighton. But I think Arsenal fans are concerned because given Gabriel Jesus' injury record in recent time, Kai Havertz is seemingly the only fit striker they have at this moment in time. I think Arsenal fans forget that Kai Havertz was signed as a left-side number eight. He's now excelling as a striker. So he's the first choice there. There are other options in the pitch. Leandro Trossard can play there as a, a false nine as well. And we did report at the beginning of this transfer window that forward was an area that Arsenal looked to strengthen in. So if they are to get a forward in this window, they've got everything they wanted in this transfer window. Now, it does feel like with time ticking, it's unlikely they're going to get one done. There's not really any panic buys, that's for sure. OK, all right. Um, Newcastle fans, listen up, because your club remains in talks with Crystal Palace over a deal for their skipper, Mark Gay. Now, the clubs are expected to try and reach an agreement that will suit everybody before Friday's deadline. In terms of incomings, no, that work's still going on behind the scenes. A few days left. I think everyone's um, trying their best to improve the squad and... Yeah, we'll wait and see what happens with the next few days. The Mark Gay story doesn't seem to go away. Are you still hopeful or have you given up on Mark? I'm not going to comment on individual players. Where are you with Kieran? I think when you look at his performance on Sunday, that was a performance of someone that was focused and ready to help the team. Kieran's experience and his know-how on the pitch um, seemed to have a galvanising effect on the group, so I was very pleased with his impact. More talks with him this week, then? No, only football talk. There'd, there'd be... There'd be no need for any other talk. I think he's. Um, I think he's in a good place. Right. Let's talk Brentford now. We spoke Ivan Tony earlier, but Johan Wisser is attracting um, uh, interest as well. Tell us about this, Michael. Yeah, interesting one, and, and rather out of the blue, but from we understand this morning that Brentford rejected a bid from Nottingham Forest for Johan Wisser. We can say the bid was an initial fifteen million pounds. Now. Now, with just a few days remaining, Thomas Frank doesn't, you know, he's probably re getting realising now that Ivan Tony doesn't have a future with him. But Johan Wisser, probably unthinkable at the moment. And certainly Brentford could be busy over the next few days if that were to happen. But yeah, more on that as we get. But quite an interest in one development from that this morning. He wouldn't want to lose two strikers in one go, would he? Absolutely not. No, and he, you know, I'm sure Brentford will look to strengthen as well. But um, yeah, absolutely not. Right, let's talk Manchester City. Um, They've done some smart business. Gundogan's in, and of course, the man they're calling the new Mares is in. Uh, are they going to offload João Cancelo and Mateus Nunes? Well, it does look like Cancelo's time at Manchester City is finally up. He's not played a competitive match for Man City for 19 months now, so more than a year and a half. And Al Hilal from the Saudi Pro League agreed a deal with City to sign him. The fee around £21.2 million. Pounds. Now, Nunes has not quite worked out so far. He's not had the opportunities. Perhaps he had a hope for after signing from Wolves. Man City aware of interest from Atletico Madrid 
for Nunes. There's been no contact yet, but they're looking at a loan deal. And I think they're looking at the situation with Gundogan coming in, thinking maybe he'll take even more of Nunes' minutes. Could he be available for Atletico Madrid? And I guess my opinion would be this could be a great move for him just to kickstart his career again and goes back to Man City next season as another option for Pep. Because at this moment in time, it doesn't feel like he's going to get many options this season unless there's some major injuries. OK, and what about a striking replacement for Julian Alvarez? Is that going to happen at City? Yeah, we were wondering that for the last few weeks, weren't we, Mike? But our understanding is it's highly unlikely now. There was talk of the young Icelandic international, Ori Oskarsson, but we understand that's not the case. Maybe someone they have looked at and potentially in the future someone they like, but we, they feel they're pretty well stocked and they're happy with what they've got so far. OK, well, we've been saying, haven't we, how Chelsea have been dominating the last few days of the window. Here they come again, because the Ipswich manager, Kieran McKenna, has confirmed they're still trying to sign Chelsea forward Armando Breuer. The deal was thought to have broken down, though, over the weekend. With Armando, it's of course a player that we've we've spoken to. I think that's pretty well known. There's discussions going on with Chelsea at the moment, so um, I've not been privy to them over the last 24 hours. So there's discussions ongoing, and uh, we'll see if it's the right thing for for the clubs and for the player before Friday. And other than that, look, it's it's not right to speak on, on any other rumours really until anything's confirmed. Was there an issue flagged in the medical? That's not right for me to comment on. That's between the player first and foremost and the clubs and. There's discussions ongoing and we'll see what the resolution is by Friday. Michael, deal done at Leeds, tell us. Yeah, good news. And Leeds fans, you'll be pleased with this because it's an incoming we're talking about for Leeds fans. It's not been a great summer for them, has it? But a bit of good news, an exciting one as well because someone I've watched quite a lot, Manor Solomon, has joined Leeds United from Tottenham on loan until the end of the season. I understand there's no option or obligation to, uh, to buy this. It's a straight loan, Solomon... Uh, Spent most of last season injured with a knee injury. But if fit, it'll be a, it'll be a good sign for Leeds. Just got 20, 30 seconds or so. Just recap the Sancho news you gave us. Yeah, Mark, this is so significant. Chelsea and Manchester United are in talks over two separate deals for Jaden Sancho and Raheem Sterling. The possibility of Sancho signing for Chelsea, which seemed unthinkable a few days ago, and Sterling signing for Manchester United, which again seemed outlandish even 24 hours ago, that is now being seriously considered. So you could have a situation by deadline day, where Jaden Sancho is a Chelsea player, Raheem Sterling, a former Manchester City and Liverpool midfielder, is a Manchester United player. That is astonishing. It's all building up to what will be a fantastic deadline day. That is Friday. Loads of drama. Deals got to be done. Clock got to be beaten. We kick it all off at 7 o'clock in the morning.